Hello and thank you for joining us on Nationwide News on the network service of the NTA. I am Nolene Ebel Ame. We begin the bulletin by telling you that Nigeria is committed to a low carbon, climate resilient, high growth and circular economy that is gender sensitive and equitable. This is the highlight of an address presented at the sixth session of the United Nations Environment Assembly in Nairobi, Kenya, on behalf of President Tinubu. Charles Alpha reports that the president was represented by the Minister of State for Environment. The vision by Mr. President is well situated in the presidential priority and focus areas and is being pursued through routine budgetary allocation. In an address to the Assembly, read by the Minister of State for Environment, Isaac Salako says, Nigeria has put together an ambitious transition plan to achieve universal access to energy by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2060 while prioritizing industrialization, job creation, and economic growth. Our target to end routine glass flaring by 2030 is well on the way to be met before the target date. Only last week, one of Nigerian major oil companies, in partnership with the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, flamed out routine gas flaring in, the upstream, in its upstream operation, thus saving our planet an estimated 340 kilotons of CO2 emission per annum. In addressing waste management challenges, Nigeria, he said, has adopted the circular economic model and developed a comprehensive economic roadmap to guide transition to a full circular economy by 2050, while partnering with the World Economic Forum's Global Plastic in developing an enduring and inclusive solution to addressing plastic pollution challenges. Alpha and T News. In the meantime, the federal government says all plans have been concluded for the commencement of food distribution to vulnerable Nigerians nationwide. Minister for Agriculture and Food Security Abubakar Kari says the flag off for the distribution of the grains will be in Niger State and subsequently in other zones of the Federation. The minister reveals that the Office of the National Security Advisor and all relevant shareholders will partner to ensure smooth and transparent distribution of the food items. We are going to start making deliveries and as they go, and we are targeting local governments anyway. So we take it to the states and then on to the local governments. So it will be uh, on the template of NEMA. NEMA is the one doing the distribution and the Office of the National Security Advisor. Niger state government has also procured more than 120 trucks of assorted grains to complement the federal government's food palliative distribution. He says President Bola Tinubu is expected to be in the state next week for the distribution of the food items. We will continue to cultivate. The only way out of this crisis is to uh, go back to uh, agriculture. Similarly, Jigawa State Governor Umar Namadi has approved more than 15 billion naira for roads construction and the purchase of food palliative to the needy in the state. Muhammad Musa Askira reports that this was the outcome of the state's executive council's meeting. The Ijigawa State Executive Council has approved about 13.5 billion naira for the completion of the 17 ongoing road projects across the state before the rainy season sets in to disrupt the construction process. Briefing journalists on the resolution of the State Executive Council, Information Commissioner Sagir Musa Hamid says approval of close to 2 billion naira was also granted for the purchase and distribution of rice and spaghetti, among other food items, to the needy in the state as they get set to face the fasting season, which is less than two weeks away from now. Sagir Musa Hame further notes that the council also approved the inclusion of the state civil servants in the ongoing agricultural loan scheme to boost much desired food security in Jigawa and by extension the country at large. This loan will comprise of inputs, it will comprise opportunity for farmers to have farmland 
that they can be able to cultivate through our cluster programs and at the same time to be able to, to be able to give them the opportunity to participate actively in the agricultural revolution industry that's what the program is all about mm -hmm. so it's a comprehensive program we have different category senior civil servants public servants and at the same time civil servant workers at all level including local government staff will have the opportunity to partake in this particular loan. A huge sum of money will be dedicated for that. Similarly, the council has also approved the appointments of heads of state-owned tertiary learning institutions as well as the chairman and members of the school's governing boards that were dissolved about two months ago following the reports of the visitation panel on the states of the schools. The action, according to Saguri, is to ensure effective and efficient teaching and learning process for quality education in the affected schools. From Duti, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. From Duse, we take you to Abiyokuta, where the Ogun State Government has launched an initiative for the sale of 100 truckloads of rice at an affordable rate to residents of the state. Governor Dakbo Abiodun disclosed this at a stakeholders' meeting in Abiyokuta, Ogun State Capital. Hakim Jimo reports. Governor Abiodun, who assured that the state government cares about the welfare and well-being of the people, promised that 100 trucks of rice and other foodstuffs like gari and beans are ready for sale to residents at subsidized rates, noting that the poor, the elderly and the vulnerable will get the foodstuffs free of charge. And we want to ensure that we carry ourselves along in decision-making and in sharing information as far as as it concerns us. The governor acknowledged that President Bola Ahmed Tunubu is fully in charge, promising that Nigerians will soon begin to enjoy the manifestation of the policies put in place by the federal government to curtail the rising cost of living. He explained that an intervention worth more than 5 billion naira, which will cater for the aged, pregnant women, the vulnerable, students, civil servants in form of payment of outstanding deductions, was recently injected into the state's economy. Governor Abiodun urged Nigerians, especially the youths, not to allow themselves to be used by mischief makers to disrupt the peace of the country. For the Alake and Paramount ruler of Egbaland, Obadidotun Ari Mugadebo, the take home for Nigerians at this critical moment is a renewed hope that is devoid of religious or ethnic discrimination in Abeokuta, Akem Jimo, NTA News. And here in Abuja, navigating through several economic challenges requires the formulation of appropriate policies and implementations that will help bring desired results. It is in this regard that the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors during a press conference in Abuja urged the federal government to enforce the executive order number five to tackle inflation, especially in the building and construction sector. Francis Udojo brings us the details. If there is any way federal government can intervene, if it is by giving other people, people empowering people to import goods, material, or to license people to produce other materials, which they can use and build house, it is, uh, is in order. You can see how price is going. The plight of this man is among the several reasons for the NIQS press conference. Recent inflation experienced in the construction industry following astronomic hike in the price of cement with a bag costing between 9,000 and 13,000 naira and reinforcement steel rolls going from 1.2 to 1.4 as against 650,000 naira per ton before now, among all the materials, is a cause of worry for professionals in the sector reported to have contributed up to 11.7% to the nominal GDP in the first quarter of 2023. If you go to the Western world as I speak with you, there are homes that are completely built with timber. So we would encourage that uh, there should be varieties of uh, substitutes for cement. The need for government to regulate prices, open borders for import of building and construction materials, provide subsidies, engage local producers, stabilize exchange rate, involve professionals as well as monitor and enforce executive order number five. Top recommendations at the press conference. The group equally urged government to discourage cartels in the industry for a seamless economic development. In Abuja, Francis Dojo, NT News. 
In the meantime, Nigerians have been enjoined to be patient with President Tinubu's administration as a series of steps are being taken to address the country's economic challenges. Director General of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Professor Abubakar Suleiman, stated this at the closing of a three-day training on a committee management system in the legislature for clerks and support staff of the State Houses of Assembly in Nigeria. Muhammad Rabiu Ali reports. The three-day training which drawn participants from Taraba, Borno, Ogun, and Oyo State's Assembly is in line with the vision of the leadership of the 10th National Assembly to strengthen a professional workforce at all levels of NAS administration. Director General of National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Professor Suleiman, says, Despite enormous contributions made by the committee clerks and other staff in supporting the work of committees and legislature, knowledge gap to achieve optimal results cannot be underestimated. As legislature and as clerks, we must upskill the level of our expertise and professionalism in the legislative system to conform to international best practices. They are participants. As committee clerk, you must commit yourself to innovation through constant research, by identifying problems and profound solutions, and also by initiating ideas for legislation. He therefore urged the participants to utilize and take advantage of the knowledge acquired to enhance their capacity for better service delivery. In Abuja, Muhammad Raibu Ali, NT News. It's time for us to join Michael Alale in our Lagos Network studios for more on Nationwide. Good evening, Michael. Good to see you, Nolin. Lagos residents have expressed optimism that the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Red Line will provide relief to the teeming population of Nigeria's biggest economy by improving travel time and reducing traffic in the state. SCA Wamaka reports. The much-anticipated red line constructed two years ago was inaugurated by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu amidst pomp and pageantry. The iconic inauguration ceremony was witnessed by notable dignitaries and Lagos residents alike, who used the opportunity to rekindle old relationships and network as well. Expressing excitement over the completion of the red line rail, residents are optimistic about the positive impacts that it would have on the economy of the state. Gaussians are going to gain man hour because the traffic is going to be reduced on our roads tremendously. It's going to improve on our well-being, our health. You know, people can get to where they are going on time. It's going to move our economy forward as a state and even as a nation. We are trader. We, we travel from one state to another state. One local government to another, another local government. And the train makes everything easy for us. If you buy like perishable market now that we are bringing, that is very difficult for Others advise that red line will be put into good and proper use as they look forward to enjoying the benefits of the transportation system. It's important we let our people know that the red light uses electricity, so people should move away from the rail. It is important for safety. Let us maintain it together and own it as our own project. With all said and done, it's indeed a Greater Lagos Rising and the Governor Babajide Songolu's administration. In Lagos, S.A. Owamaka, NT News. The stability of Nigeria's capital market has been attributed to dedication and strategic acumen of the 19th president of the Council, Nigerian Stock Exchange Group, late Abimbola Ogumbangu, who died on February 9 in a helicopter crash, alongside Herbert Wigwe, former chief chairman, group chairman of Access Bank. Jobopola reports 
prominent personalities from the Nigerian capital market and business landscape extolled the virtues of the lawyer and business guru reputed to have achieved demutualization of the exchange. A rare gathering of capital markets and business community in Lagos to pay tributes and honor the legacy of the former chairman of NGX, Abimbola Ogubanjo, whose contributions to the Nigerian Exchange Group cannot be overemphasized. Also in attendance were wife, children, and other family members of the late business mogul. The event was an emotional farewell geared towards entrenching the legacy of Abimbola Ogubanjo. The group chairman of Nigerian Exchange Group, Umaru Kwaranga, and other speakers underscored the contributions of Abimbola Ogubanjo to reshaping the NGX trajectory in West Africa. His dedication to the advancement of our market is a wavering commitment to excellence and his profound impact on the life of those around him are a testament to his remarkable character and leadership. He was a truly a great leader. He was courageous, visionary, I'm always happy to take responsibility for his decisions. For the past presidents of the NGS captains of industries who have benefited from his wealth of experience, legacy of the late Ogubanjo will continue to live on, having contributed his expertise to various organizations. Family members had the opportunity to perform the closing gong ceremony to honor the deceased. Of the family, the tributes will help them to recover from the irreparable loss. I think all the younger generation will take um, note of what's been said, and hopefully it will be a spur to them to also try to emulate. Abimbola Ogubanjo died at the age of 61 in a helicopter crash and was honored with the title of Officer of the Order of the Niger by former President Muhammadu Buhari in 2022. In Lagos, Joel Ogubola, NT News. Those are the reports from Lagos Nationwide Continues in Makodi shortly after this break. Do stay. Thank you for staying and a warm welcome to Makudi. The Benue State Police Command has arrested and paraded suspected kidnappers, bandits and armed robbers at the State Command Headquarters in Makudi. Briefing Newsman Commissioner of Police Emmanuel Adesino assured people of the state of tackling the menace of insecurity. Blessing Omeche Ebute has the details. The new Commissioner of Police, Benue State, Emmanuel Adesino, who resumed duty three weeks ago while addressing journalists in his office, says significant achievements have been recorded in the command since his assumption. One of these achievements is the arrest of a notorious armed bandit, Chen, and his gang members who adopted a member of the Benue State Volunteer Guard and one other killed and buried them in a shallow grave. During investigation, one van named me and Adela Tese, both of uh, Ingnev Ukun local government, were arrested in connection with the case. These suspects confessed to the crime and led the police detectives to a bush at Adogo village, where the victim was killed and buried in a shallow grave. Parading the suspects, CP Emmanuel Additional reveals that following intelligence report, Police detectives arrested some suspected gun manufacturers at Agu in Vandekia local government area of the state. One precious Ebukashuku of Unicha Anambra State was arrested on the spot search conducted on the suspect led to the recovery of three locally fabricated Barretta pistols. The suspect led the team to the hideout of his regular suppliers. One Tiaf Wesi and Tiaf Tekuma, the black the blacksmith of Adikbo, Kwan local government, who specialize in fabricating all these illicit weapons. He adds that investigations are ongoing in the various crimes to unravel and apprehend other culprits. He assured people of the state that security operatives will continue to provide the conducive environment for peace to thrive. In Makudi, Blessing Omecha Ebute, NTA News. Still on security, the Nigerian Navy is to establish a naval operational base in Benue State to tackle maritime insecurity and illicit activities, as well as to promote economic activities in the state. 
Chief of Naval Transformation, Rear Admiral Mike Oyamin, who disclosed this during a visit to Governor Hassan Alia at the government house, said the team is in the state on its feasibility study to identify a suitable location along the river Benway for the facility. Correspondent Elia Sitiav has more. The assessment visit to the state, according to a leader of the committee, Rear Admiral Mike Wamen, follows the request by the state governor to the chief of naval staff for the establishment of a Type A naval operational base in the state. The chief of naval transformation said, apart from the land, the operational base will accommodate facilities such as housing, hospital and schools, with the primary aim of providing security of lives and property and improving livelihoods. This base in respect to be a very, very uh, strategic one, given the uh, strategic nature of various uh, states in, the, in Nigeria, food security, you know, architecture, as it were. Can High St. Alia, who appreciated the Chief of Naval Staff for the prompt response, assured the committee that the state is fully committed to seamless takeoff of the project. The governor added that upon completion of the feasibility by the committee, the state government will provide a survey plan and certificate of occupancy for the land meant for the facility. The Benue state government is also committed to providing the basic infrastructure and equipment towards ensuring a speedy takeoff of the operational base. And pertinently, the Benue state government will provide an administrative block temporary wooden jetty for locally constructed flat bottom gunboats and four hillock security patrol vehicles. The committee is to visit other security agencies in the state to strengthen synergy for better results. In Makudi, Elias, ETF, NT News. That report runs off our contribution from Makudi at the moment. Nolene, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Charles. I'm still continuing with uh, security reports. The Defense Headquarters is advocating youth inclusion as a critical component in the renewed onslaught against criminals in the country. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, stated this in a message at the National Security Summit in Abuja. The role of youth in the fight against crime is essential as they constitute a significant component in the nation's population and the workforce. However, despite their energy and strength that ordinarily should have been a resource base, many are used as enemies against the state by unpatriotic elements. The CDS says no to this culture. I unequivocally consider the youth a critical stakeholder in curbing the insecurities in our country, Nigeria. Beyond conventional roles, the youth can actively contribute to intelligence gathering, community engagement, and the integration of technology solutions in our security measures. This National Youth Summit is focusing on curbing insecurity, achieving a robust and sustainable economy for a new Nigeria, youth inclusivity in nation building. You have a long year ahead of you, so you will be part of the security architecture. Without security, there can't be development. This platform is, is designed, mostly the summit, is designed to alert security agencies that they should start including youths in the fight against insecurity. The conveners are proposing training of youth from all the local government areas under FCT to support the military and security agencies with intelligence reports. In the meantime, operatives of the Federal Capital Territory Police Command acting on intelligence have arrested three notorious unwanted car snatchers in the territory. Commissioner of Police FCT, Beneth Igwe, who met the revelation, also paraded two others specialized in interstate sale of fake dollar notes. Correspondent Onotia Kubu reports. Nine vehicles, among them five Hilux, a Lexus RX 330 SUV, Toyota RAV4, Camry and Corolla were paraded as recovered from the syndicate. Commissioner of Police Bennett Igwe said the four-man syndicate with one at large are responsible for the series of car snatching and disappearance 
of several Hilux vehicles reportedly being stolen across the FCT. So these are about nine of the vehicles we are talking about. We are begging that the owners to come, especially Hilux. You can see five of them. We assure them that we are going to recover more. I'm a businessman. I was called to buy a car without knowing that the car was a stolen car. That is my case. CP Igwe also revealed that similarly acting on credible intelligence, police operatives of the command from the anti-fraud unit arrested two suspects in Tinkan Resort Garden in Jabi in possession of 36 bundles of fake 100 US dollar notes. He disclosed that they confessed to being members of an eight-man gang that specializes in interstate sale of fake dollar notes and had sold several of the fake notes to unsuspecting residents of the FCT. The suspects, the CP revealed, are currently assisting the police in apprehending other gang members on the run. In Abuja, Onotu Yakubu, NTA News. Still talking security, in line with its core mandate of curtailing the spread of illicit arms, the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons of the Office of the National Security Advisor, Northwest Office, has taken its crusade to Kano. Aminu Umar reports that the one-day interactive session has in attendance security agencies, traditional institutions, women and youth group, among others. Latest data shows that there are about 10 million small arms and light weapons circulating in West Africa, 70% of them said to be in Nigeria, all in the wrong hands. This is largely responsible for the rise in criminality and violent conflicts in the country, with banditry becoming rampant in the Northwest. For the second time, within three months, the Northwest Office of the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons is visiting Kano. This time is on a mission towards sensitizing people on the center's core mandate and the need to take active part in making sure that the goal is achieved. The Northwest Coordinator of the Center, Air Vice Marshal Haruna Umar Muhammad, told the participants that their contribution towards making Nigeria safe is critical towards helping the center address the circulation of illicit arms that continue to pose threat to the national security. As long as we will do away with uh, drugs, illicit small arms and live weapons, by the grace of Almighty God, we will have a better society. Even though we represent the emirs, I think the people given this um, lecture should expand their lectures to, the, to every emirate. Other speakers emphasize on the need for more emphasis on finding ways of preventing people from arms smuggling and the importance of citizens' participation through taking ownership of the center's mandate. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News. In the meantime, the Nigeria police force is taking necessary steps to build the capacity of state coordinators and divisional police officers in the task of protecting pupils and students. Francis Form reports that the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Betokun, assures that the force is committed to secure a conducive learning environment across the nation. It is the flag of, of the training program for state coordinators and divisional police officers of the force across the 30 60s and the FCT in ensuring that schools are adequately protected. Designed to address all aspects of safety, including physical security measures. The training aims at crafting a definite strategies for collaboration between the police and other stakeholders to secure a more learning environment. The safety and security of schools and educational institutions are of utmost importance to the Nigerian police force. We are committed to implementing measures and utilizing our resources to diminish the threats facing students, staff and educational facilities throughout the country. The safety and protection of our schools is critical to our national security. I must therefore praise the 
initiative by the Inspector General of Police. Stakeholders call for collaboration in achieving the objectives of the Safe School Initiative. The capacities of students and staff of schools will be built to help them fit into the plan itself and play their own role. What we have done so far, we need your collaboration to make it work. A simulation exercise to demonstrate Nigeria Police Force preparedness to scale schools and other learning places and the inauguration of other critical assets to be deployed for the initiative by the school's protection squad forms the high point for the event. Francis from NTA News. In a related development, census programs in Nigeria must be prioritized as actual census data is vital to finding solutions to several challenges in the country, especially in tackling insecurity and unemployment. This is coming from a retreat in Uyo, a Kwaibom state, where members of the Senate Committee on Population and National Identity Card and Management of National Population Commission are brainstorming on how to actualize the delayed national headcount with emphasis on generating credible data. Olushe Adebo has details. Nigeria's population, one of the fastest growing in the world, is put at the growth rate of 3.2 percent, an ancient demographic dividend has continued to form cross of discussions just as this retreat also seeks to strengthen capacity of these key players in national population growth. You are here to brainstorm with a view to generating ideas that will facilitate a history census. For the MPC, it is ensuring continuous engagement with the legislative hem on areas of support towards the successful conduct of the next population and housing census and other programs of the Commission. The Commission is convinced that conducting the next population and housing census is a huge investment the nation must make to launch Nigeria on the path of economic prosperity through proper planning and optimal resource allocation. We are dedicated to collaborating closely with the Population Commission to address any legislative needs that may arise in the lead of the forthcoming national census. It is about 18 years Nigeria, seventh most populous nation on earth, last conducted an actual national census. And commitment here is to generate a new census data that will have the required credibility and reliable information for an all round development planning. Ulushaye Adiago, NCNews. And talking education, government is calling for collective responsibility to educate students in secondary schools about the consequences of engaging in destructive behaviors. This aims at creating an environment that will foster growth. This is coming from Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, at an occasion to sensitize parents, teachers and students on the need to kick out vices in secondary schools across the country. He describes school as not only a place for academic pursuits, but also a sanctuary where respect, integrity and discipline are cultivated. Dr. Sununu reminded every key player to work together in order to create an environment that empowers students to make positive choices and resist their lower vices that threaten to derail their potential. Now in the era of social media, the triad of learning, character, and imparting skill cannot come at a better time than now. The principal are hereby directed to sustain relevant school clubs and societies like agric, press, literary, and debating societies, among others, to keep the mind of students occupied with useful thought. To achieve this, the minister believes that the students must engage in open and honest conversations to express their concerns, fears, and challenges. 
Issues of epileptic power supply, estimated billing, late payment of bills and lack of maintenance of transformers are factors identified to be militating against improved electricity supply uh, in Bielsa State. These stakeholders maintained should be addressed to attract investors and boost the socio-economic development of the state. Doris Okumoye reports that this is the views of the people who are lamenting power outages in the state. All right, we shall bring you the report in the course of this bulletin. And now talking sports, sports provide a common interest that brings people together regardless of ethnicity, beliefs or religion as people come together to support their favorite teams or athletes. In this package, Ayomiku Ajibola examines the power of sports in uniting people from all walks of life. It's good to be at the gathering of young men and women who are ready to showcase their talents in sports. This 14 biennial police games is a harvesting ground for talents. This is what we need in Nigeria today. The unification of colors, ethnic groups and religious differences among others. Only early 2024 police game is very important to officers of the force whose lives resolved around fighting crime and criminality. The police games offer ample opportunities for Nigerian police to open its arms to the public to build trust and enhance confidence. We want to partner the number of the public to see the other side of police, the entertainment side, the sporting side of police. And you know for long Nigeria has uh, benefited immensely from the reservoir of athletes in the Nigerian police. The 14th Biennial Police Game is a further testament of the power of sport to unite the country and promote harmony among Nigerians. In Ibadan, Ayomiku, Ajibola, NTA News. Over to Ayomiku, Ajibola, you know, for more on the, the sports, Lekon Salami Sports Complex, Adame Sipa in Ibadan, venue of the games for more on Oluyole 2024. Hello, Ayomiku. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much, Nolin. Uh, with over 4,000 athletes across the 36 um, across the 36 command, including FCT, competed at Oluyole 2024. I must tell you that uh, the, the competitiveness has been very, very encouraging, and talent have been discovered across board. Um, just like I see be behind me, currently ongoing in one of the indoor sport indoor sport hall of the Lake Salami Sport Complex here at Adama Siba Ibado is the mixed martial arts demonstration fight. This was not included at the 14th banner edition, but I was told it to be included at the next edition. So quickly to talk more about the mixed martial arts demonstration fight, after all who will introduce himself to me. So can we meet you? Okay, um, thank you for having me. My name is uh, CSP Carlo Chijoke. I'm the chairman of Nigerian Police Miss Martial Arts Association. Right. One of the newly approved association by the Inspector General of Police, IGP Ebuteku. All right. Why mixed martial arts and what does the police want to achieve with this? Okay, um, primarily the police have been far, far, far ahead in terms of Miss Martial Arts in Nigeria. But immediately the Ministry of Sports recognized the Miss Martial Arts and approved it as a federation. Um, the IGP felt it was very, very important that the police keys in and to address the issues of uh, law enforcement and also to protect the interests of uh, Nigerian police athletes. All right, Oli Ole 2024, how will you describe it so far so good? No, Oli Ole 2024 has refocused Nigerian sporting's potential. It has, we have been able to discover uh, new talent and a lot of le records have been shattered and it has put Nigeria in a very, very strong position as regards to this sporting year. You remember, if you remember that this year we are having Olympics and also having the All-African Games. It, it has helped to put Nigerians' foot forward very, very strongly to be able to win podium performance for the country moving forward. All right, thank you very much. And Lolin, in the next 24 hours, this game will be, will be closed by the president. Interesting, Ayomiku. Thank you very much for your contribution from that end. Now, we shall be joining a Port Harcourt Network Center for more on Nationwide.
Thank you, Darlene, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Army 6th Division Port Harcourt has discovered an illegal oil bunkering site with over 40 dugout wells used by perpetrators to siphon crude oil in a more local government area of River State. This was during a sweep and clear operation on the Trans Niger Delta Pipeline led by the General Officer Commanding 6th Division Nigerian Army, Major General Jamal Abdul Salam. The report technique used by oil thieves in stealing crude oil involves digging about 40 feet deep into the ground until they get to the oil point. Major General Jamal Abdul Salam, who led the raid on this site, says it is worrisome to imagine that people could actually conceive such an idea that is resulting in huge economic loss to the nation's resources. While describing it as an eye-opener, the GOC notes that such activity also results in environmental degradation. You can see all around us is dug out and all are deep. Well, you need ladders to have access into it, and deep down, it's just crude oil. So they're just fetching. The way you go to a well in your village and use a bucket or drop to draw water, that's how they're drawing uh, crude oil in this place. This is amazing, and it's uh, very sad. He further says... The Nigerian army will not relent in doing the needful towards ensuring that the region is rid of such criminal elements. I will bring the attention of the relevant authorities to this site so that they can come and see what can be done. But in the meantime, our men will deploy so that we can stop people from assessing the area because it's even dangerous. One of the suspects revealed that the wells are owned by different families in the community. All suspects arrested at the scene are in custody as investigations continue. The 2024 World Zero Discrimination Day calls for global attention towards the protection of health and the rights of individuals. Here in River State, stakeholders are advocating the need for authorities concerned to take practical steps towards making it sustainable. Kingsley Amadji reports. The World Zero Discrimination Day marked every 1st of March seeks to promote equal treatment for everyone and eliminate marginalization. While the objective of the day is targeted at gravitating the global community towards elimination of all forms of discrimination and bias, stakeholders underpin the theme to the realities in Nigeria with a call for action. It's a reminder for us to know how to live together in spite of uh, our differences in terms of uh, tribe and uh, color and um, religion and uh, political affiliation. They must be aware that life in self will not grow until you have to help life. You must help life to grow or X, you will not get there. The UN International Day such as this serves as avenue for action from member nations. Observers believe the objective can be made more effective if the UN takes steps to ensure compliance among member states. It's not enough to just set out a day. Make sure that people are being followed up to ensure that what you have asked them to do is being done. States are reminded, individuals are reminded, seminars are conducted, programs are conducted to ensure that these things are brought to bear. From social, cultural, religious, economic to political, fiscal and psychological discrimination do exist across various societies. To bridge this gap, Analysts insist that education, enforcement of relevant laws, and continuous awareness are needed to change the narrative. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. And that does it from Port Harcourt. Hope you are still on to Nationwide and the news belt now continues in Meduguri. The recently appointed General Officer Commanding 7th Division, Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Abubakar Haruna has visited show of Borno to seek royal blessings and collaboration aimed at advancing Borno State and Nigeria as a whole. Umar Jimbarima completes the story. 
The visit underscored the importance of engaging with traditional leaders to foster development and cooperation in the region. During the meeting, discussions centered on strategies for enhancing collaboration between the military and traditional leadership in addressing security challenges and promoting socio-economic development in Borno State. We have reported, sir, and uh, we want to continue from where we stopped, by God's grace. And inshallah, we are hoping that this should be the end of this insurgency. In response, the Shiu of Borno Abu Bakr ibn Umar Garway al Amin al Kanemi expressed commitment to supporting initiatives aimed at promoting peace and unity to the state and Nigeria at large. We are coming here in Borno, it's a homecoming. We are very happy and we are very grateful. The visit symbolized concerted effort to strengthen partnership and foster unity in addressing insecurity issues facing Borno State and the country. In Meiduguri, Umar Jambarima, NTA News. And with that report, we are done from here. Nolin in Abuja will now continue. Thank you very much, Abu Bakr. And now to birthday felicitations. President Bola Tinubu congratulates a distinguished Nigerian, Al Haja Latifat Olufunke Bajabia Mila, as she turns 94 on March 2nd, 2024. President Tinubu celebrates the accomplished politician and doting philanthropist whose life has been one of sacrifice, devotion to God Almighty, charity, and service to Nigerians. The president salutes Al Haja Bajabia Mila, who is the first elected female local government chairperson in Lagos State, extolling her as a lead, leading light in the world of great women who have defined Nigeria's history. The president prays for the nonagenarian and her family that Almighty Allah will grant her many more years in good health. Similarly, President Bola Tenebu celebrates the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, as he marks his birthday, 2nd of March 2024. In a statement, the President congratulates Pastor Adeboye on hitting another milestone and joins the body of Christ in thank given for the celebrant's remarkable life of impact that transcends cultures and borders. President Tinubu thanks the General Overseer for his regular prayers for the country and his wise counsel, noting his patriotic zeal and manifest determination to see Nigeria succeed. The President prays for his continual well-being and that of his wife in addition to many more years in the service of God and humanity. And with that, we conclude Nationwide today. Thank you very much for watching. I am Nolin Ebel Ame. Do you enjoy the rest of your evening?